Okay. Oh, I feel you. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, did you grow up in Dumbledore? Or... Welcome to the One Fall Wrestlecast. What's up, guys? One Fall! You guys see where I'm from? I know that place. Derek knows. I do. <laughs> do you know Machiavelli? He's also from there. I, I know. He's from Double Dwarf <laughs> Germany, yeah. Yeah. Him and Ali Esther Black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Back when I was growing up on the mean streets of Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> and to avoid the, the blacks. Me and Machiavelli Black. As, as in the family. Little brother Ali Esther. <laughs> yeah. They were rough and tumble kids. Already, oh, already set up. <laughs> oh, man. Here was Bony. Wrestling, lots of wrestling this week. Some of it, I uh, yeah, I guess lots yeah, of most, outlaw mud show bullshit. Just yeah, messy yucky wrestling. There's lots. Most of it, of what we're here for, baby. Most of terrible. it. This was not a. This was like like terrible. last week was pretty good. Was okay. It was pretty decent. The week I think was really good. This week's like it's like it's going. This week took a nosedive. Yeah, except for SmackDown. SmackDown was good as fuck. And I will not be told otherwise. Dude, that crowd was insane. Like it was holy huge. crap! Was it just? Huge. It was like Rock and Rio. It just went on. <laughs> yeah, it was like that a, was wild. there was there was there was, there was a fucking tilt a whirl in the background, and it was <laughs> there were there were people on the tilt a whirl watching SmackDown. Yeah. It was insane. It was crazy, but you know what? They gave no fucks. They booed Nikki Cross. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, Nikki, I Ash. watched it live. It happened. It happened on television, um, which was weird because it was a big open door venue, do Humby, and uh, they booed her anyway. Because anyway, legit question. I'm curious. It's it's probably more difficult to sweeten the crowd in an open air arena. I would assume. Would you guys agree? Uh, I mean, they the uh, what's what McAfee had them had them like. Hyped before. Can we just? Well, say, can no. We, I mean, like how they. Now we're gonna start. And... Pat McAfee. Yeah, let's talk. National fucking treasure. Pat McAfee is a saint. <laughs> like, pride of Pitts, pride of Plum, Pittsburgh born, Pittsburgh raised. Gotta love him. And he went to WVU, so he's yeah. also got that Morgantown tie. Ties together. Yep, yep. He should be the patron yeah. saint of this podcast. A little bit of smack dine. Anyway, saint of the podcast. Anyway, go on. Oh, like seriously, I, I seriously though, you. my man fucking hops up on the thing. So this is, I'm assuming that this is whenever they threw to the Miami venue, the outdoor thing with the, yeah. the rolling loud, yeah. which was a train wreck in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm assuming it's during that time, right? But this video came out of him like standing on the, on the commentary desk and he's just hyping the crowd. Like, can we get more of that? C can that happen even whenever they're not Throw into a, you know, to a satellite. I feel like that that this might be a thing that just happens continuously, um, and uh, yeah, I feel like this might that might just be a thing that they do on and on and on forever and ever. Amen. Uh, or at least Pat McAfee's gonna do it because ain't nobody gonna stop him. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean SmackDown. I guess was otherwise it was a it was a decent show. I liked a lot of it. I'm like looking back through the card. I'm like, yeah, that wasn't great. Yeah, that wasn't great either. Uh, like, like the Rollins and Edge stuff, and the Finn Balor and the and the and the John Cena and the Roman Reigns stuff was good. And I liked, I liked the the stuff with, uh, I liked the stuff with the Usos. But like, man, I'm looking back through this. I'm like, oh, there was some shitty stuff in this. Like, this is not as good as it should have, could have, would have been. But anyway. 
Ah, but, I digress. I mean, what are our topics uh, for this evening, John? I mean, we, we, we got a couple things. Um, big news. Uh, Jeff Hardy. The CM Punk is all elite. <laughs> yeah. We'll get yeah, to that. Like, and like, that's the unfortunate <laughs> thing, right? Like, like, that's all that's really been in the wrestling news this week has been about Brian Danielson and CM Punk, and we talked about that shit last week. We you know, did. It's not so. happening unless I see it come from the official AEW. Nope. I've All seen too many reports of, oh, yeah, everybody says think... this morning he's stunned. I don't know. So let's, I don't want to talk about this for too, 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 too long, but I have I have one, a couple quick thoughts. Either one, Derek, you're right. It's it's not happening, and, and they have just – they have pulled the wool over everybody's eyes. Or two – uh, it is happening, and they were trying to save it as a surprise, but nothing can be a surprise, and wrestling is terrible, and everything is terrible, and the internet is terrible, and all the surprises are ruined. And, you know, we didn't expect Aleister Black to show up. That was a great surprise, although they mucked it up on commentary. But, you know, that was I think they were trying to do that again and, like, just have a, like, holy crap, is that who I think it is kind of moment. But No, that's know. not the man that I wrestled. That's not the man. That's not the man no, that I wrestled. It's not the same back man. In, back in Dumbledore, Germany. That's Tommy N. No, it's not. <laughs> also, this week, AW Dynamite was fucking confusing as hell. And usually, usually Excalibur has some sort of clairvoyance to like tell you what's already happened in the past. And and but this week he just didn't say shit about why fucking nonsense was happening. So, so fuck it. Let, let's talk about Dynamite because. I I gotta I gotta agree with you, pal. Like I, I it's uh, and, and you're like oh, I don't know what the hell I got thoughts on this. I don't know what the hell this is. And then I'm like I'm watching this, and you go, yeah, it's just gonna get really fucking weird. Yeah, and it got really really strange. I I couldn't. I mean, it was it it was like I I was stone cold sober right watching this. Like I I was stone cold sober watching this. And I'm like, what the f- – why? I don't understand. Like, what's going on here? So, I, I mean, let's just – from my perspective, it started out strong. And, like, last week was fine, but this is supposed to be, like, a special show. Last week yeah. was fine. Started out good. In fact, the first match, spoiler alert, is going to be my match of the week because it was Chris Jericho uh, versus uh, – what's his face? Sean Spears. Uh, Sean Spears. I was going to call him Ty Dillinger. Uh, <laughs> but, but, yeah. Anyway, uh, so Chris Jericho versus uh, Ty Dillinger. Um, and honestly, this was the best Sean Spears match I've ever seen in my entire life. It was a great match. Uh, start to finish, Chris Jericho still has it. Uh, I mean, Sean Spears, I feel like, has always been a solid worker. And it was just, it was a great show. To start. I'm like, this is going to, they started that off that way. The Five Labors of Jericho. This was number one. I mean, I, they started it off, and I'm like, you know what? This could be a good show, right? It could be yeah. a good show. I that was the my match. first. That was my first thought. Uh, MJF was great. Called the crate. Told the crowd they were idiots for cheering for Chris Jericho. Uh, and then you know, and at the at the end, after Jericho wins, you know, he's winded uh, as, as we would expect. It looked like he'd been through a fight. Which uh, I mean, he kind of was, but you know, he's also at it. He, I, I'm really glad that somebody else has the same body shape as I do. He's 20 years older than I am, but that's okay. Um, and then MJF's got the out, out walks out walks Nick Gage, right? And after that, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, Duke the Dumpster Drozzy looks terrible. And <laughs> <laughs> so they tell him Why? the next week he's got to fight Nick freaking Gage, and I'm like. Who the fuck is this loser? So, so Tom, Tom in our group message goes, he goes, man, this Nick Gage guy, I don't know about this. Who, who the fuck is this guy? He's like, uh, this guy, there's no way this guy can work a match, right? And I go, hey, pal, Nick Gage is like a legendary deathmatch wrestler. Like, he is the, the, the king of the deathmatch. And Tom went, oh, that explains a lot. And that was literally the end of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no that talking was, deathmatch wrestling with Tom. You just you yeah, just don't even was no. I was like, oh, okay. there's no convincing. <laughs> it wasn't popular but, in Dumbledore. So we're gonna get a garbage match next week, everybody. <laughs> However, unfortunately, the end of this show, just like the end of the last show, we had garbage matches. 
we gonna have a garbage match every week now on AEW? Look, yes. man. Yes, we are. Right now and then it's fine. But if everybody puts on a fake garbage match every week, and then they show up the following week, there was a coffin match like a week, like like last week too. There's just like yeah. Everybody's dead. Everybody's beaten, bloody, bruised, destroyed. Oh my god, it's a Texas death match. Nobody's fucking dead. They'll all be back next week. Who fucking cares? Or will they? <laughs> Who fucking you don't cares? Know. Yes, they've never not been back next week. Nobody fucking cares. The only guy who didn't come back was a guy who didn't, who was never in a death match. Like, like, so they were gonna have Brody Lee go away for a little while after getting beat by Cody. The poor man gets sick. That's the only thing that, that's the like like but everybody else goes through death matches where they like get taxed and I'm not shitting on Brody Lee. Bro, don't look at me bad. Walter, you got that look on your face like Tom, you're not just bringing up Brody Lee. But like everybody's like, like going through tax and chairs and they're fucking immortal. Everybody's fucking immortal. Nobody takes time off in AEW, pal. No. You just pull the tax, you pull the tax out of your butthole. And you fucking get back out there. That's right. Yes. You wipe with the soft wipes. Fuck kayfabe, right? Fuck kayfabe. You're no, not I actually mean, that's, dead. That's what this comes down to, huh, Derek? Fuck kayfabe. Yeah, you're gonna sit there. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna defend this, so. That's I am. Yes. I mean, I, I already yeah. knew. I mean, we we anyway, already said. Anyway, before, it starts to slide downhill because the hunter Frankie <laughs> Kazarian versus Doc Gallows was just. Doc Gallows yeah. sucks. I'm sorry. Bro, that's listen. That's this is too much credit for what that was. Yeah, about. Doc Gallows sucks. I don't even want to talk about him. Wheeler Utah. I don't even know who that is. Uh, with Orange Cassidy. Uh, He's a, so literally the best the blurb. Part, what? If you would have read the blurb on the screen when he got introduced, he is the prodigy of the best friends. Protege anyway. of the best friends. Oh, uh, well, whatever. Anyway, best thing that happened in that match is uh, Sting and Orange Cassidy kicked each other a little bit, and then Sting did Yeah, this. I was all about that. That was great. That was, that was the only cool... That was like... That match was... That was the worst match otherwise. I'm honestly uh, surprised that was the worst Darby Allen match that. I've ever seen in my life, but that... Um, I, I enjoyed it, too, and you know, I told you off-air, Derek, I enjoyed it because, like, that, that shit with Orange Cassidy's over, right? And, like, I think it's the dumbest... It's shit dumb. in the world, right? But like, you just got fucking Sting to endorse the dumbest shit in the world, and like, it's okay because it's fucking Sting, and Sting yeah. can do no wrong. Right? And like when yeah. he did the he did the lazy, yeah, like, that, that was, was it for me, man. Fantastic. Like <laughs> that was what sold it for me too. I was like, I mean, okay, all right. So I like I chuckled about the whole thing. Okay, and then uh, Britt Baker versus Nyla Rose. Nyla Rose still can't wrestle. Unfortunately, no, unfortunately for Britt Baker, uh, she still can't wrestle. However, Britt Baker can wrestle. This was the best Nyla Rose match ever, which is not a high bar, um, but the correct win happened. Although Britt Baker's hurt now, you see, yeah, like she broke her, her arm, broke her wrist, and then and she, but could, she could still do this. I noticed on the tweet on the Twitter machines, yeah, uh, so that was good. Uh, backstage. That's all gay. That's all dumb. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Orange Cassidy versus a Blade. That was nothing. Okay. Main event. Whoa, whoa, right? whoa! That was a really good match. What are you talking about? Anyway, main event. <clears throat> the event was main. Uh, and in the main event, you have the United States, the IWGP United States Champion. I thought I was watching AEW, but I was wrong. Because everybody's got everybody else's titles, but they're all on the line on AEW. Uh, versus another AEW star, the Murder Hawk Monster, Lance Archer. <clears throat> they uh, they they proceeded to have a uh, outlaw mud show, uh, a Texas death match that was not actually a Texas death match because that actually has a definition. Uh, this was a last man standing match, uh, and uh, Lance Archer won. It it sucked. It sucked from start to finish. It it was it looked fake. The whole thing looked fake. Uh, John Moxley needs to cut this shit out. It's not good. Every last one of these that he does is a fucking dud. This was a dud. Um, these are duds. This is like that was terrible. That like obviously he doesn't want to die because he's got a brand new baby. His wife doesn't want him to die. AEW doesn't want to kill a man on live television. 
And, you know, but they, they wanted to make something happen. So, oh, my God, the Murder Hawk monster, a guy who we fucked over so many times and made look like an idiot, beat John Moxley in a Outlaw Mud Show bullshit match. And it was a dud. Um, so, yeah, Moxley got wrapped up in barbed wire. Couldn't get up to beat the 10 count. Last man standing match. Not a Texas death match. Hold on. Let me look up the rules to a Texas death match. Let me look them up. Nobody, nobody, nobody stop me. I'm on a roll here. I'm on a roll. Texas death match. Okay. What is a test? Okay. Pro wrestling fandom. They're going to get this. In a Texas death match, uh, it's similar to a last man standing match. However, you must be pinned and then a 10 count is initiated. That is not what happened. That is not what happened. He was wrapped in barbed wire and then one. Two. Bad. So, so you you clearly missed the part at the beginning of that match. Whenever the commentary said these are New Japan's definite rules and definition of a Texas Death Match. No. So it was a last man standing match. No. Just throwing that out there, though. You Fellas. know, I probably I probably went to take a pee. <laughs> Truth be told, I was in the I was probably in the potty, and I didn't I didn't pause it because the rest of the show had been so bad. However, I did look up Texas Death Match, uh, and uh, beforehand, and I was like, "What? I'm not. I didn't. This didn't happen." So yeah, that's uh that was AEW Dynamite. It was a very disappointing dud, uh, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So, uh, you don't say congrats to the first match for not being terrible. Congrats. Why to are you terrible. all the way you are? <laughs> all of you wrestling fans, all of you, not talking about the way that everybody. I, I want because something different, man. I love something good. different. I'm so sick of watching WWE uh, and this seen I, old man, blah, 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 blah. And now we've got companies changing and working together and using their belts and other shows. Now we're gonna bitch about that. Yeah. What are we doing, guys? What are we doing? What do you, you want to watch? What do you want to watch? I mean, I want to watch SmackDown. I want to watch what? SmackDown over and over again. Is what I want to watch. Jeez. Did you watch Smack? Like I want to watch SmackDown. That's what I want. I could not imagine being a promoter. It's like the most fickle fan base you could imagine. No, like, it's not. Have you ever I'm met, just like, out here being Star happy to see some new or... stuff. And you're like fucking they didn't pin him first, God, damn it. He didn't. That's the look, you're gonna call it a call it a last man standing match if it's a last man standing match. I don't care. That doesn't, but like, that doesn't sound as cool as a look. Texas I called out the WWE match. when they had a strap match that didn't <gasps> follow strap match rules. So yes, you did. You did. I'm gonna be you did. I have I'm to be so glad I always come prepared for this. I have to be as uh, to the put look. I got to call them the way I see them, and I'm oh, calling it a strike, all time, right? It was a strike. Damn it. It was a strike. I just love wrestling. I just love it. And, and it's Look, like, it was a strike when WWE did it. the same it. thing every week. It was a, That's look, what I've been getting it, for years. Then call it a last man standing match. But still, they can't end every show. They're going to end next week with a garbage match. Guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is going to be three weeks Nick, in a row. Right? Nick Gage, Chris Jericho, this is about to be good. It's like, going to be as violent as you can get garbage. for cable television. Then it's about to be the main event <laughs> again. Yep. I can't so, wait. I am three pumped. Week, three weeks in a row are Outlaw Mud Show matches. Main I'm going to be lighting up the group chat like, Tom, this is the best shit I've ever seen. <sighs> <laughs> it's just not. It's. it's I, I can't. Oh, delicious whiskey. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. I just can't believe that, like. So. AEW, like, God, they were on a roll. They were like, man, we're getting crowds back. We're going to, like, we're, we're picking it up. Things are going to be good again. This this was the worst, sh worst show since the last time Joey Janela was on the show. What happened to him, by the way? Is he dead? <laughs> I, I don't imagine that he's His dead. His car broke down, and we haven't seen him since. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's just on the side of the somewhere. They just left that bastard in Columbus or wherever the hell his car broke yeah. down. He's there. Oh, uh, no. What happened mm. after the mask thing? Tony Khan was like, bro, are you fucking with me right now? Like, uh, you're right. We, I forgot you, I forgot that was after the broken down car. Yeah, they, they I guaranteed he's getting punished for that. Uh, hey, you fucking idiot. 
Yeah, no, they were like, he was like, ah, they were, they were like, oh, he's just trolling. That was the internet wrestling fandom. He's just trolling. He trolled himself right off television. Good uh, job, idiot. No, you know what happened? You know what happened Whoa. to Joey Janela? Bunch of good people from WWE got released. <laughs> they, got, they, they, got they, they don't need you anymore. <laughs> Look, we don't need you anymore. We have Andrade, yep. Yep. and we have... Uh, from well, Andrade can't from even Dumbled- speak English, but he's better than you, Joey. <laughs> so, so, listen, can we talk about that segment, though, guys? Yes, like, please, let's do it. What a fucking train wreck. Oh, my God. How like, is it? Like, I saw a picture of it as it was happening, like, as we were finishing our show. I'm like, oh, cool. They brought out Chavo. What a rub for Andrade, right? Oh, dude, I was so pumped when I saw the picture, and I was like, oh, right? Chavo. Yeah. Like, like, you know, because Andrade is like clearly like supposed to be the second coming of Eddie. That's like part of the gimmick, right? Right, right. And right. what what was I watching? <laughs> what just happened? I, I don't Yeah. You watched it too, right? You one. know? Yeah. Hey, so you? so it's it funny because I just I just listened to it um right before we came in here, before you, you hopped on, Tom, because Derek had was re watching it. And uh I was like, bro, this is bad. Like, it's bad. He's like, oh, I don't remember it being that bad. And then we went back and watched. He's like, bro, it's real bad. Like, yeah. What did I just see? As soon as he opens his mouth and he starts talking, it, it's bad. Well, it's a babyface promo. Yeah. And Andrade, like, his entrance was a babyface entrance. Like, has Andrade, Andrade's never been, to my knowledge, a babyface on television. Am I? No. Am I right? No, never. Not, not not as far as I know. No, no, no. And even especially on Andrade AEW, obviously. Out, even Andrade coming out, it was he was getting heel heat. He was doing heel things, right? Yeah, he had a heel yeah. entrance. Yeah. And then so, he stood there, and then Chavo came out, and all of a sudden Chavo's a baby face, and I'm like, okay. Uh, I thought Chavo would come out and like I, Chavo's obviously he's been a heel before. He could be a yeah. heel again. Like it's not like it, I just thought. Oh, cool. We've replaced Vicky with Chavo. How cool is that? Chavo's right. so much better. Um, you know what he was that, acting like, though? Think about it. Kerwin White, man. he That was like, that was that gimmick ca- kind of coming out a little bit. Being I, all... hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. Maybe, maybe it'll turn that way. Clearly, the crowd was into him. I mean, I he's probably. He's not would've... a heel manager, though. That's the problem. Maybe that's not. what he's going to do. He can't manage a heel. And maybe like, he will. Maybe he'll th- look. Um, uh, this was a strike, you know. We're, t- we're calling balls and strikes here, and and, and hits and whatnot. This was a strike. Uh, they they uh, you know, if AEW is looking for hits, of course, uh, this was this didn't work for me. And then what was the most confusing part? Like Chavo being out there was just like, uh, okay, maybe it's just to showcase Chavo. There's a crowd now. Like like in my mind, I'm going like, you know, it's nice to see Chavo. I was like, I'm trying to give it a pass, right? And then the Death Triangle comes out. And immediately heals it up. So now I'm like, what is going to happen? Right? Right. So, like, I, and that's the thing, man. Like, the their definition of heels and babyface that, that they don't play, right? We talked about this before that Cody had made, made the comment that, you know, these are just people that it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, if you're going to tell these types of stories, you have to have a better definition of that. Well, not only that, look, I don't care if they don't have a definition between heel and babyface, but why do these people have any reason to dislike each other? Right. Like, it seems to me like they should all be friends. Yes. But they have no... Actually, it seems to me like like Andrade should replace Pac, if I'm being honest, right? I mean, that would make more sense. Right, yeah. I mean, I just... I mean, in in the middle of that mucked up, uh, you know, thing of garbage there, that promo, he said that, oh, you guys work for me now, you know? it. it, None of it made sense. It was kind of implied. I just, it just didn't. That I, might be their end game. Sorry, Tom. Hmm. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. But yeah, that maybe, might be their end game. Maybe. You know? I mean, at that point, maybe I kind of thought that, like, oh, you know, maybe Excalibur is going to come in and clairvoyantly explain what the hell's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> can can on, Excalibur get in the ring? Like, is there a reason why he can't wrestle or does he just not anymore? I think he's like, retired. He's like, but old. he's. He's not like physically injured, like well, so isn't you know. I just don't think he's a good wrestler. (laughs) I don't think he's actually a wrestler at all. If I'm being honest, I don't don't, think he's ever wrestled a match in a day in his life. No, he wrestled in Dumbledore, Germany, ten years ago. Uh, ago. Because he because he told us that. Yeah, yeah, I I know that makes it true. He's clairvoyant. He does not have a good memory. 
You saw, it on, fa- you saw it on Facebook, so it must be true, right? He's clairvoyant. Also, I, I want to congratulate is. Derek on his upgrade to uh, Coors Light from uh, <laughs> from Natty Light. <laughs> Had a little extra couple of cents oh, in the paycheck this week. Good for you, also, buddy. Wow. In a blue cup. <laughs> Bro. That was and brutal. Good and day. the single cup yogurts. Those are I don't even brutal. buy those. I buy the scoopy yogurt. I'm gonna scoop mm. my yogurt. Mm-hmm. You buy the singles. Wow. Rich ass motherfucker. Thomas Spent all his money on them one God. fall replica on those uh Texas on those uh exploding ring deathmatch posters. You wait till I you wait till I get my Nick Gage shirt. You guys are gonna give me so much shit. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm... I should have worn my Adam Bueller shirt today. Uh, I, I wanted to find it, but I wasn't digging through my closet. Poor first. Duke, bro. It's so it does not look good. It's so funny because Tom Tom just talked you into making a bunch of fucking stupid purchases just so you could get dogged on on fucking yeah, YouTube. Basically, I mean, yeah. you know, that's that's, that's kind of why I'm here, right? Is to defend yeah. the defenseless to defend <laughs> the outlaw mud show wrestling that deep down us as fans love we just won't admit it kudos to you sir kudos to you i come from the bingo halls of fairmont are you dumb are you done He's done. Let's move on. So besides AEW Dynamite just being a jumbled mess. So, hey, Tom, since we're we're kind of on this, man, you know, talking about Nick Gage, how about he uh, just drop the uh, GCW title and World Deathmatch title, whatever oh. the hell it is, to Mr. Woo 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 Zack Ryder. It's yep. the heavyweight championship, sir. Uh, okay, whatever. Uh, woo Woo Woo. Uh, I, yeah, so I saw that. I saw first again, like I saw the picture, right? You see the picture of Zack Ryder holding it up with beer flying at him. Uh, yeah, people a, were I pissed. Could, I have a couple things to say about this. Look, this everything that happened at the you end of that know. match was exactly 100% correct. The crowd was 100% correct to throw garbage in that ring after that garbage match. Okay, that was that was the 100% the correct result. To that match. Um, I watched the last, whatever, 45, 50 seconds of the match. Wow. What a... I don't know that that... I, calling it a match feels disrespectful to matches. Uh, it was more of a... I don't know. Like a dusty fart? I don't, it, was, <laughs> it was bad. And anyway, so I watched the end of that. They're all they're all bloody. And Nick Gage, like I said, looks like, like, a, like a weird, bloody, stitched up bandaged potato and uh you know he got hit with something that crumbled when 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 zach right i'm not even calling him by his name anymore fuck it zach Ryder hit him with the dusty the, the dusty thing matt cardona that's his name hit him with the dusty thing and then pinned him one one two the three and then he stood up tubes. like light tubes sir so many beers like just the amount of beers that came at him were were insane and i was like you know what that's the correct reaction from the crowd that match was terrible Good for them for being upset. Um, they weren't probably upset for the same reason that I would have been upset, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, they reacted accordingly. Now, uh, to move on, not move on, but to bring up something else, Dave Meltzer said it was terrible for the industry. What a terrible evening. What a terrible match. Yada, yada, whatever Dave Meltzer said. Um, I don't, I hate agreeing with Dave Meltzer because had this happened in AEW. Uh, he'd have called it the greatest segment to ever happen since Stone Cold Steve Austin in a beer truck or something. But it happened in GCW, Zack Ryder, and Nick Gage. And so it wasn't the greatest segment ever. It was terrible for the industry. And honestly, nobody cares. Did that hoarder seriously fucking say that? That it was terrible for the industry? Yeah, he did. He did. They're making shirts. You could buy that shirt, too. Seriously. Apparently... He just, you know, like if it doesn't, if it's not a death match in Japan, then it's just bullshit. If it's not in Japan or if it's not an AEW, it's bad for the industry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if it's on, if it's on, yeah, yeah. If it's on GCW, it's bad for the industry. You know but what the problem was? Is there wasn't a fucking light tube named after him in, in the whole No, match, yeah, so it didn't say. Maybe if we would have a Meltzer light, light tube, you know, then, then it so would have been fine. Dudes, these two dudes tore themselves from asshole to appetite. 
uh, in a Dude, stupid they map. They tore that fucking thing down. That was awesome. I know. We'll never agree, but it was a fantastic match. And I mean, as far as Nick death Gage... matches go, I'm sure it was fantastic. Yes. But here's the problem. Here's the problem I have with death matches. Nobody actually dies. No. It's called well, a death match. You can't it tell about a, a film. Blown. Shit. They'll call it something else because it ain't nobody dying. You can't put right. this shit on Let's television, call it an ultra violent. Call it a match. hardcore match. Call yeah, it a. All right. It's fine. Whatever you want to call it. It's a stain match. I don't all care. I saw was Nick Gage put the shit to Matt Cordona, and he definitely made sure that if you're going to come in here and take this fucking belt in this type of match, you are going to pay the price, son. Because he left a bloody mess. And it was and not it a gimmick it. bloody mess. No. Oh, they Nick probably... Gage wasn't even that bad. Yeah, you're Zach right. Ryder was fucked. Like, it was bad. Yeah. Way still, bad. He was still good enough to pose with the title in a beer after the match and have a big uh, smile. No, that's because he had the gloves on, you know. like, And, he, he, and he had all his teeth still. Well, you know, light tubes don't take out your teeth. They, they're more of a long-acting cancer that will slowly kill you over time from the It'll filament. Slowly make you look like Nick Gage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make you a little turtly. And... It's really hard to have negative energy when you guys are just fighting all the time. No, we're not even fighting. This is this is a discussion. We go in knowing that we're never going to convince the other that yeah. you know our preferred no, style of it, wrestling it, is hey, what listen. the other one will eventually choose. But you know. so like that's my new whiskey. I'm talking like, about like, it with I you mean, guys. I'm just saying like. Walt just drinks whiskey while I we just argue drink whiskey while you guys argue. <laughs> no, yeah. So it was uh, honestly, truth be told, I'd never heard of GCW before that clip went viral. So I mean, clearly that was great for GCW. It was great for Matt Cardona. It was great for Nick Gage because otherwise, had no clue. Couldn't have cared less. I mean, I, I'm going to go back to not caring. But uh, I watched the clip at least, right? Yeah. Right? I guarantee you right. his shirts definitely took a pop on pro wrestling tees there for a minute. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Woo, woo, Here's woo. a thing that I was thinking about, though, as I was watching this. So the only reason that I could think, why would you want to drop this to Matt Cordona? Unless, one, he's obviously going to make some sort of extended run. That's whatever. I don't know. That's kind of the obvious thing. But is Nick Gage actually going to compete a little bit in AEW? Are we going to see I more of this? I think that's the uh, I, I I think that Nick Gage might be all elite for a little bit. Yeah, I'm thinking I don't know that it'll be a long time. Now I don't know how much because I mean this is kind of his specialty is this death match or or yeah I mean they'll put him on YouTube uh, I think yeah like you can't really I mean YouTube's bigger than than whatever GCW is broadcasting on um, unless whatever we've got there on Tuesday nights that I still have not watched yet for AW I can't even think of what it's called Big Show's their commentator. Elevation. Yeah, it's like Dark Elevation. Yeah, maybe that's going to be, you know, obviously on YouTube you can show a little bit more, uh, a little more, more not, violent. Not really. No? Like, I don't know. Bit. No, YouTube's pretty strict. You, can't even, you can really can't even curse on YouTube. I mean, you can, but you're not going to get monetized. Um, How do they let us get by? Well, you're not monetized. We don't make any fucking money, pal. What, well, you can put whatever you want. You can put, I mean, you can't put nipples on there, but like lady nipples, not man I nipples. Can't, oh. <laughs> Here's Man, the yeah. fine. <laughs> Otherwise, no here well, I've only those. got I've only got one. I mean, you've only got one. Yeah. Well, now I'm interested. Nah. <laughs> no. It's a secret cool. time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving. On, what else are we talking about tonight? So, I I I have to talk about Roman Reigns and John Cena. Da-na. Yep. Yeah. And now with the ever so welcomed inclusion. Of Finn Balor, yes, great match against Sami Zayn. By the way, I thought it was yeah. great too. Wow, it was a little quick. Uh, I mean, it was it was obviously a welcome back Finn squash match, but whatever. Yeah. It, it was good though, you know. I and hey, Sami's uh, fun though. He's he's uh, yeah. animated. He can sell. Yeah, he'll be good. And he the thing is, he's not going to lose any heat for losing to Finn Balor. You know what I mean? He's still going to be just as hated next week, which is. Means he's doing his fucking job. Oh man, is he ever? This is his you know best game ever. God. He is doing well. If his, the conspiracy the would ever end against him, he could actually win a match. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's I can't wait though. to hear what he has to say about it. Oh, truthfully, now I can't wait to hear what he has to say about it next week. That's like truth. Yep. Mm-hmm. That, that's where I am with this. Right. And then 
Oh, now he's got a universal championship match. What about me? You know, it's going to be mm-hmm. good. It's going to mm-hmm. be fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But listen, I want to talk oh, yeah. about, I want to talk real quick about the promo specifically that Roman Reigns cut. And like, I, I was watching SmackDown. It was like, early in the afternoon and, and, you know, the family had just got home and, and the promo was on. And I couldn't believe that Roman Reigns said that about John Cena. Did did you hear? Did you hear, Derek? I mean, I watched it what twice. Is, what? What are you talking about specifically? I'm talking specifically about you come back and you, you we put on you or coat of paint on you and you come back, same entrance, same music. Same way to you run to the ring. Same it's promo. Like missionary. It's like missionary every yeah, single yeah, okay. night, and the head of the table don't got time for that. Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, um, yeah. every single night. Like John uh, Cena is gonna wear the green shirt this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but listen, can can we talk about how good Roman's character has kind of that's even from yeah, where he yeah. was four weeks ago. We start getting this little bit of wrinkle of this like overconfident. I mean, not you know, now he's starting to get a little ego to him, right? And, and he's starting to talk a little more shit. And um man, it's so good. It's so good. I it's I mean, I think I feel like since he pinned everybody, it's their WrestleMania. It's yeah. been it was like like at the time I was like, I can't believe that happened. I didn't think that was gonna happen. And it just got better and better and better and better. That's why for me, like SmackDown is always like I le- I end SmackDown. Uh, that was the last segment of SmackDown, that promo, and then Finn Balor comes out and he's like, maybe if you're not interested in John Cena's challenge, maybe you'll be interested in mine. And whatever he says, he's like, welcome back to relevance, whatever. And they're like, Balor, Balor is like, I accept. And that was yeah. it. That was the end of SmackDown. And I was just like. This is I can't believe like like I'm getting everything I want and I didn't even like ask and they just gave it to me and yeah I mean it's I I have to fully agree with you right because like you know we sit in here week after week and we put over Finn Balor and how good he's been on NXT and that we knew on the shoulders the man's shoulders were good for carrying a carrying NXT for a year and a half and like Mm -hmm. we knew that like. You know, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back, and all fingers point to Raw, and he shows up on SmackDown, he walks in the ring and tells Roman Reigns, I'm coming for you. And After a dominant victory. Like, yes. He was on, like, second or third or something, but he dominated. It was a great match. Um, they're they're definitely getting him right right now. And, yeah. uh Oh, God, I hope he comes out at SummerSlam as the demon. Maybe that's just me. I don't know that we're going to get back to the. I don't know that we're going to either, but I really want it. It'll sell a lot of action figures. Put it that way. Nice. I just a merchandise. I kind of hate that they're pushing him on Roman already. Not that I'm not ready for it. I'm happy to see it, but it's obvious that he has. He's not going to come out here and 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 lose to Roman on his basically his re debut, if you want to call it that. No, he will lose. See that he's going to lose to Roman. Oh, he's one hundred percent going to lose to Roman. He's def- oh, yeah. See, I didn't think Roman. that at all. Definitely going to no. lose to Roman. He's definitely right. going to lose. Well, Roman. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong. He's yeah. going to lose to Roman. He's going to lose. Uh, I just don't see why they would bring him out here and do that. Like, for what? Like, because he's gonna now to bury yeah. another guy. All right, here yeah. we go. Now, they're not going to bury you him. Know? I think it's going to go 20, 30 minutes. I think it's going to be a fantastic. Did they bury Edge? I mean, I think it's going to go oh. a long time, and it's going to be really good. Actually, I do think that um, Balor's probably going to win, but there'll be some tomfoolery that happens that Roman will pull it through. Um, so I think I think that's what's going to happen. And in fact, that seems to be a lot of these finishes that Roman Reigns has matched as recently is like he should has happened you know and he's won in like classic heel fashion right but right. It, it still leaves you the that little piece of doubt that he can be beaten right right so. and I, I, but you know i think that uh i think that's what's going to happen again uh, look i would be super excited if look if finn comes out as the demon and beats roman and then even if he's only the champ for like two three months and like roman chases him around for a little while and they have this like thing and then Roman eventually beats the demon to take the championship back three months later or whatever the storyline ends up being. I, I mean I think 
I think it's good either way, right? I think there, there's it could there it's going to hit a point in the road. It could branch either way, and either way is good, right? It's it's yeah. they're, they're, it's good wrestling and good storylines either way. So from where I'm, I'm sitting, from where I'm sitting, I don't see Roman Reigns losing a match until after WrestleMania, after he beats The Rock at WrestleMania. That's probably true. I mean, truth be told, if that's the case, that's probably true. Um, you know, unless you know, unless it something happens and Finn Balor is a champ for a little bit, they don't usually leave. They just don't. He's been the champ now for almost almost a year. It's just almost not, a year. Yeah, it's just not. It, it's not super common for that to happen. But when was the last really? time? When was the last time they've had such a in a captivating like storyline around a, a character like they have like they've built with Roman Reigns right now? That I mean, that deserves true, that championship attention. I mean, but can you just run him like he's he's a champion that shows up though? Can you just run him through guys for another year till WrestleMania? I mean, I I think that this is where where we start getting a little bit. I mean, you you've got Finn Balor coming back to the main to the main roster. That's going to buy you a couple of months, right? And then you've got Survivor Series coming up, and then he's going to have to face Bobby Lashley, which is a throwaway match. It does nothing for the storyline. He's going to beat Bobby Lashley cuz he's not going to lose to Bobby Lashley. No. And then they're going to no. just continue and then you've got Seth Rollins waiting and then You've only and got you could, superstar shakeups going to happen too. Right. So you could you could put him through a couple guys. A couple they could shake up Raw. You could put him through Otis. You could put him through, you know, uh, Drew. Probably they'll do that. I yeah, can imagine. I, I would imagine that Drew's got to eventually step over and be a part of this because they put on they put on some you know some great story there and the match was incredible um, at Survivor Series last year between the two yeah, of was. them. Um, yeah. That was definitely something that I would I would watch long term between right. those two guys. Yeah, I would watch I would watch like a, a a set of three there. I would watch a set of three with um with 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 Rollins too. I feel like they never they never really did that, did they? Roman and Rollins like real um, time. I know that I know that Rollins cashed in on Roman, but it wasn't a like there no. wasn't like a long term thing around it. It was like. No, one kind of went him one way and one went the other way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. After the split, and they never really intersected other than that cash in, as far yeah, as I remember. I, I, the only thing is, is that Rollins is a despicable heel at the moment, and Roman is also a heel. So I can't really, uh, somebody's going to need a gimmick change before. And it ain't yeah. going to be Roman. So no, it's definitely going to be Rollins. But is, so. is, is, is he going to be accepted as a babyface after being a jerk? I mean, Maybe maybe they'll they'll go against the WWE mold and they'll go heel versus heel because I mean it I don't know can, can work long term. I, I think for three months, I think they could definitely do that for three months. Could they? I don't know. Three because it would be a total time. game of one upsmanship. Like yeah. who's gonna outsmart who? So uh, I, I, I mean would, look I would if, be if down any to watch two guys can, if any two guys can pull it off, it's those two. Yes, I would be down to watch it. Yeah, interested to see. So, speaking of who outsmarted who, I know we started to touch on this at the beginning, and then we kind of didn't really get into it. So, obviously, Jeff Hardy has COVID. That's been announced. Yeah, we did. And carrying Cross, I recently saw he made the comment that, oh, yeah, Vince, Vince has a big plan, blah, blah, blah. Well, you didn't have this in your fucking plans, did you there, Vinny Mac? How smart does it look now that your big bad guy coming up from NXT took a fucking loss and now he can do absolutely nothing, nothing to avenge that loss because you have Jeff Hardy sitting on the sidelines coughing his lungs up two weeks. But I, so here's my question. And I know we don't have an answer to this. Is Jeff Hardy vaccinated? Because I have no he, idea. That's against HIPAA. You can't ask that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next topic? I don't want to talk about this anymore. I, Let's move on. I, I knew that would get you. Uh, we're done here. Let's move on. What's the next topic? <laughs> this is Bobby Lashley's penis all over again. What's the next topic? It sure is. Just, no, we're, we're, I'm done. We're done. <laughs> Cut. Move on. Next topic. Okay. So, Tom, let's talk about your boy Keith Lee real quick, and then uh, I got one, one, one little tidbit, and then we'll hit match of the week and get on out of here. So – Keith Lee tweeted out today. Um, I've decided I'm just going to tell my story. I saw that. Uh, give me a week or two. So I guess um, he was kind of 
hoping the WWE would tell the story. I, I mean, I, I don't know what this means, but I mean, I think that everybody kind of just wants to know what's going on. Um, well, he was back on TV already. What's the story to tell? They put him on TV, and then he wasn't on TV this week. But like, it, what? Right. I mean, what's the story? What's going on? Is it? Is there? Is there a story? Is he okay? Is he not okay? Is he sick? I mean, I don't. I don't know what the what the deal is. It's you know, at, at this point, it's like. I'm sure whatever it is, I'll either be underwhelmed or totally shocked. It's either going to be something that I'm just like, really? This was the big secret? This yeah. was the whole hubbub? Like, it'll be some kind of contract dispute. And I'll be like, this wasn't even worth putting your, putting time to type it out. Like, this is not, this is, there's nothing dramatic about business. As somebody who yeah, deals I mean... with business all fucking day, if, it, if that's the case, like this, this needs to be something that's like serious and personal because if it's just business, he should have said, Sorry, guys, I'll be back. It's just business. And, and like that should have been the end of it. And then, you know, maybe if they wanted to touch on it in a podcast or something at some point for like a 30 second blurb, it's a, it, but like he's built this and built this and built this and built this for months now. Like, this is the biggest buildup in wrestling. Am I wrong? Like where the no, hell is totally with you? Going. I mean, basically, shit or get off the pot. You can only lead, right? us, lead us along for so long. Eventually, it's going to be underwhelming. Exactly what you've already brought up, and that's how it's going to probably end up. Is you know, I mean, you, you let us on this little journey for how long now? Six months? What's the I deal? Mean, it, at this point, if it's like you know, he has to tell us about like some kind of diabetes and heart disease, it's going to be like, oh my god, or like I fought cancer sure. or something crazy like that. Right, or, right, right. Like yeah. it's gonna be like, oh my god, poor guy. Like that's the like, but if it's if it's not to that level, you've over oversold this. Like it's 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 and I'm not to say not that I want it to be that. I I I prefer it to be, have been oversold and for me to be like, dude, what like this nobody cares. Like don't don't do that. Like that's not like that's how I want to react to it. I want it to be not super serious, but I have a, and I have a feeling it's going to be not super serious, but who knows at this point? So, yeah, I don't know, man. It's it just, it's been just a disappointing thing, you know, since day one. And I, I didn't necessarily agree with the call up when it happened, you know, and, and he was both, he was both champs. Yeah. I, I think they brought him, on him. It was a knee jerk reaction. They brought him too early and then they, they, they pushed him too soon and Vince saw something that he didn't like, and that's why green. we're where that's we're at. That's what Vince saw. Vince saw a guy that was green. Yep. The same thing they did with Braun Strowman for the most part. I hope. They pulled him right up, and then they were like, big man's green. And that was it. Vince saw that on T. He watched it. Because, like, you know, he'd heard, otherwise he'd heard the champ seen the chance seen the highlights. But when he saw it live right. in, that, in that atmosphere, the yep. non-NXT atmosphere, he went, big man's green. And that was it, you know, because he had a great entrance in the Royal Rumble. Yep. When Lesnar saw him come in, Lesnar gave him the rub, was like, yeah, all right, big man. Yeah. I it mean, you know, that was, you know, that was a good, but then it was just like, ah, he, and he is. And that was and even I mean, the year before the, the Rumble the year before he was in the final three. Yeah. But I mean, you know, Royal Rumble is different than being the guy. Right. And Vince didn't see him as the guy. Vince saw him as green. And, you know, those guys he hasn't seen that way. Obviously, he, has, he doesn't see Otis that way. I mean, he's no. not. he didn't push Otis to the moon. But, like, we're talking about a guy who's consistently on television every week, who's over, who was a, super over as a baby face, over as a heel. You know, it's it's yeah. it's working really yeah. well. Uh, I think and that also he's won thought, money in the bank. Also won money in the bank, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he saw maybe Keith Lee as like this type of guy, but maybe even more. And then he saw him, he was like, oh, Keith Lee doesn't have the skill set yet. And, you know, it deflated him a little bit. And, you know, Vince looks deflated enough, doesn't need to be deflated <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and uh, that was that. Yeah, especially like right here. Oh, man, what's going on there? I mean, that's what happens when you sleep two hours a night, pal. I guess you're right. It's a good point. All right, I got one more thing, and then we'll hit match of the week. All right. So, 
we talked about The Rock earlier, right? So his name's been coming up an awful lot. And um, I guess that, like, he's kind of been rumored to be confirmed for Survivor Series. Um, they're going to do it that early? Well, they're, he's going to start hitting the road a little bit to probably start promoting towards WrestleMania, right? Because if you get The Rock, you get Hollywood. You've got John Cena, you've got Hollywood. Yeah. So if you can get both of those guys back at say right around the same time, I mean, you've right. got one's going out, one's coming in, right? And mm-hmm. then you know they're the two biggest stars in 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 company history, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess uh, <laughs> there was a reporter on the red carpet here just a couple of days ago for the uh, Rock's new movie, The Jungle Cruise. That looks that, awful, by the way. I like the yeah. Rock. That, that looks really bad. That That's looks tooth fairy. That, that looks tooth fairy bad. Tooth fairy was not. Tooth fairy is a five star classic. All right. Anyway, moving on. Um. So yeah, the, he got asked about his WWE return on the red carpet, and he said, "Nope, not happening." Of course he did. You know. I, I mean, what's he gonna say? Oh yeah, it'll be around uh, February to getting getting ready for WrestleMania. Good man. Good man. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. I mean, talk about a guy that I have I have the utmost respect for, even when his movies suck. Uh, good man. Nope. Not the guy me. still gets up at three a.m. every morning and just pounds iron like none other. Guys, do you know what super what superhero the Hurricane could definitely beat? The Scorpion King. <laughs> I see what you did there. That's a real clip. Uh, Look it up. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Man. So, I mean, good on the rock, man, for sure. Uh, keeping it kayfabe. Uh, it's going to be keeping awesome. Keeping it kayfabe. Can't wait. All right, guys, match of the week. So I'm a liar. Just like Edge, right? I'm a liar. That was good. I told you guys earlier that uh, Chris Jericho versus Ty Dillinger was going to be my – and, yes, I know I called him Ty Dillinger, and I did it on purpose. Um, was my match of the week. It was fine. It was really good, actually. It was a uh, – I, I did want to put it up as an honorable mention because it's the best match that uh, the chairman has ever been in, ever. It really was quite a kickoff, and it was his best match, and I thought Jericho was good. Good match, but it was not the match of the week. The match of the week, in fact, involved some of my favorite people. And not that it was like the greatest technical match ever, but it was Finn Balor versus Sami Zayn. And we talked about this match earlier. We touched on it. Why was it my favorite? One, because they did it absolutely 100% correctly. It was a squash match. Welcome back, Finn. Welcome back, my friend. Yes, sir. Came out to Sami Zayn, heel with a ton of heat. Finn Balor's back as a babyface, stepped right back into the babyface role, hit all the stuff, hit all his babyface moves, coup de gras, one, two, three. Sammy's going to get heat for that because now Finn has challenged, as we talked, Finn has now challenged Roman. It's going to be great for Sammy because now Sammy can reference that in his promos. And now I get Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns. It's going to be awesome. Who lost there? Nobody. We win. Everybody wins. That's a 100% win. And when a match and a return is a 100% win, how can that not be my match of the week? Absolutely. Derek! So did I'm so sorry, guys. I was sitting here thinking, like, should I yell at my family right now? Because I don't know if you can hear it, but there's this... Can't. Can't basically, help. it's the don't locate up. remote beep is what's going uh, on. I was wondering what that was, Mel. Controller. Yeah, yeah. Someone's trying to find the remote. I'm ready to just meet my mom. Find the motherfucker. Anyway, so <laughs> it's beeping. We don't have a six story house. Search. This is not hard. So, all right. I know no floor. one's going to agree with me here, but guys, I got to pump it up again. Like, it's got to be the GCW match. Guys, go out and spend some money. You don't even got to spend money. You can find it on the Googles. Watch the match. Take some time Wait, and watch what? the match. Hold on. What? what? What match is it? <laughs> Nick Gage, Matt Cordona. I'm sorry. 
I know the the look on your face is just <laughs> utter disappointment. I'm not that I would ever it, even think of this. I, I know you. Look, I, I watched I, the whole. I'm, minute, I'm talking about all thirty of our and a half of it. Why it, do I need to watch more than that? It's so fantastic. Like it's, this, it's not. If you're looking okay. at it from how Hold I on. see pa- it, is... pause real quick because I forgot to mention sure. this. Did anybody see John Moxley Blade like looking up, like with the camera focused on him? Yes. Did anybody else? That was actually John something Walt and I were talking about earlier. Yeah, Did anybody see the, uh, John Moxley cut himself during yeah. the match yeah. with the camera focused on his head? Yeah, they're bad at that. It's like the fourth blade job they've caught. It's not, it's uh, he didn't try to hide it. It was it, it would have been just as bad if he'd have pulled out a goddamn machete and been like. <laughs> That's I mean, what at he least did. at least that would have been dramatic, right? He was so, like, sneaky. If you tune into the GCW match, though, there's no hiding it because it's legitimately happening with a light that, tube that, that's and fine. a pizza cutter. Good, good for them for actually using real knives and not having yes. the, not having to fake it. Like, ah, oh, hit me with the gimmick thing. But follow us on Instagram and Twitter at one underscore fall WC. <laughs> no, you okay? All right, you got to tell us your match though. <laughs> And tell us why it wasn't Outlaw Mud Show shit. Uh, <laughs> my match of the week was Tony Storm versus Zelina Vega. Um, okay. I, I, I'm really, really sad at the way that they were booking Zelina Vega. I really thought they were going to bring her in and make her look strong. Um, but maybe it'll come. I thought she got you know, a lot of good. Maybe I she thought she eat. ran that match, honestly. Oh, she, she did cool. for sure. But um, I like Tony Storm's new finisher. I thought Tony Storm good. looked really good in that match. Uh, I really hope they don't fuck her up. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that was my match of the week. I, I, I rather enjoyed that. I'm, I'm glad to see Tony storm up. I hope that she gets, I feel like she's, she's a unique enough looking female. Hi. Oh, we got family time. Now we're looking away. Anyway, I, she's a unique enough looking person looking like with the, although I don't like how they sold her about like being influenced by like baseball yeah. or something i like, don't know just it, let her be okay it was fine look for the for the entry it could have been it, it it was fine I'm glad to see her up there she's a she's definitely a main roster level talent and for sure. she deserves it and i'm i'm here for it and i'm ready to see her work with some serious main roster talent and put on good tony storm-esque matches yes yes Keep I, away from yet, I haven't watched that match is she face now or is she still heel She's a face, I think. Yeah, she, I think Zelina's a heel. It's weird. It wasn't real clear. I, I, Zelina Zelina Vega is definitely a heel. Um, Tony Storm could probably go either way at this point. I think they're going to settle on her being a face, but at least her first match was okay. It was good. At least her first match was a good match on a yeah. card. Yeah, it was good. Rather enjoyed it. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with her moving forward. Um, just hope they don't muck it up, man. That's all. Yeah, me too. So, all right, well, let's, uh, get on out of here. Hopefully, um, you know, some wrestling isn't so outlaw mud showy for you this week, Tom. I just want to watch some good wrestling. That's all. Nah, I hear you. Listen, not I, too much I, to ask. full disclosure. I came in here. I'm hot. Uh, I'm like, I'm having the day from hell. And then you guys like, yeah, you know, sucked my. My mojo right out of me. Did you notice that it got to the point that Walt's just straight drinking from the bottle? There's yeah. not even a snifter anymore. No, nah, nah. you broke the snifter. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. You're broke. Straight from the bottle now, guys. I mean, it just. Well, yeah. does it taste that much different? Yeah, actually, it does. Oh, well. Yeah. I'll get you a snifter next time I see you, Walt. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, it'll be a special, a special. I love you, buddy. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> hey, <All right>. <laughs> good one, though, fellers. Yeah, it was good. Tight to the point. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Tom was, came in, pretty... man, on fucking fire, dude. I'm like, I was ready. I like, I like when Tom just push, push, push. It was good. It was good. It was good. Hi. All right. I'm taking us home. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at one underscore fall WC. Check us out on YouTube. If you're watching us, you know that we exist. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Tom loves comments. Also, if you're into yo-yos, check out, check out Mr. Tom over on Throws and Brews. He's got some good stuff going on. Um, 
I yeah. haven't a video yet this week. You it's haven't? Been, it's oh, it's no, been a while. Been the a, last one I saw was the monkey finger one. I think that was it was a week ago. That came out on Monday last week. Yeah. I gotta do something. I haven't I don't even have anything recorded. I do have a yo yo. I wanna do something else though. I need to do some I used to do other stuff. I need to find other stuff to do. Yeah. Need to get the old wheels turning. It'll be good. Some stuff. It'll yeah. be real good. All right. Thanks for hanging out. It's all love. Catch you next week. One fall wrestle cast. <laughs>